Fox 45's coverage of the dysfunction at City Hall continues tonight. Right now, we're demanding transparency from Mayor Brandon Scott as he faces two scandals. Fox 45's Rebecca Pryor is questioning his silence on a new bill moving through City Council to repeal term limits. Our team coverage begins tonight with Jeff Abel and a closer look at how city contractors are handled following a controversy surrounding a donation the mayor accepted from a city contractor. Jeff? Well, there are some tough words tonight for Baltimore's Board of Estimates, who some critics complain are playing right into the hands of city contractors. At City Hall, there seems little resistance to a city contractor who repeatedly asks for more funding and who repeatedly receives it. The Board of Estimates is no longer a fiscal watchdog. It's just a fiscal lapdog. The company, which was awarded a $26 million contract six years ago to repair the city's underground utility network, has year after year been awarded more funding to complete the project. Now, that $26 million conduit contract has now cost taxpayers more than $130 million. When we see contracts that are given out that have overages of, you know, sixfold, that's unacceptable. And the Board of Estimates needs to do a better job in monitoring and doing oversight of these contracts. The latest infusion of funds came last month when the city's Board of Estimates approved another $12 million for the project. That came just days after Mayor Brandon Scott received a $5,000 campaign contribution from J.P. Grant. And according to the Baltimore Brew, Grant secretly finances the construction company whose conduit contract keeps ballooning. In a city like Baltimore, we call that a bribe. That's what it looks and walks and talks like. The mayor and his two appointees on the city's board of estimates typically control the outcome of the board's five votes. And that, according to watchdog David Williams, is a problem. There needs to be fewer political people, more fiscal watchdogs on the board of estimates. That's a contribution. There's nothing else to say. Last week, the mayor discounted any connection between the contribution and the ballooning contract, but taxpayer advocate David Williams insists the system is in dire need of repair. When the weakest link of the chain is the mayor, you are in trouble. And that's why you see contracts that go from $20 million to $120 million, because nobody is watching. Nobody is doing the proper oversight. Well, there is nothing preventing city officials from accepting contributions from city contractors. However, the city does not allow them to participate in business related to them. We're live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Jeff, thank you. We're going to take a closer look at the timeline of these donations. On October 31st, Mayor Scott's campaign committee reported a $5,000 donation from J.P. Grant, $1,000 short of the maximum allowed, according to records from the State Board of Elections. On November 2nd, Scott received two other identical donations. According to the Baltimore Brew, both are connected to a company linked to J.P. Grant. Two weeks later, the Board of Estimates approved a $12 million contract with that very company. The mayor did not vote on the contract, but his appointees did. It is also important to note that three years ago, after news of Grant's illegal contributions to Catherine Pugh broke, then Council President Brandon Scott returned his donation from J.P. Grant and called on the Inspector General to investigate him. Mayor Scott is staying silent on a new piece of legislation that would repeal term limits. Now, he supported the measure that voters passed with 72% support last month. Well, yeah, listen, I supported term limits and voted term limits twice. So, for me, we know that the voters have spoken. Now, Fox 45 News is pressing the mayor, asking if he'll take a stand. Rebecca Pryor continues our team coverage. Yeah, last month, voters made their voices heard by overwhelmingly passing term limits. But now that decision is back up for debate as the mayor remains noticeably silent. It's barely been a month since eight year term limits for elected leaders were passed. A ballot question, a whopping 72% voted yes on. And already, city council members who are hoping for more no's, attempting to take matters back into their own hands. Question K's effect will be to strip voters of their choice. Last week, Councilman Ryan Dorsey introducing a bill that would contradict what voters just chose by putting the question back on the ballot in 2024, this time asking voters to repeal the newly passed term limits. The people lined up to fill the seat are more likely to have been bought and paid for 
by wealthy and powerful interests, just like question K itself. Council members Odette Ramos, Danielle McRae, and Christopher Burnett all agreeing to sponsor the bill, while others, like Councilman Yitzi Schleifer, spoke out against it. To completely repeal it uh, is a slap in the face to the voters. Fox 45 pressing Mayor Brandon Scott for where he stands on the issue, asking him last week and again today, do you support Dorsey's proposal? Why or why not? And what message does this send to voters who overwhelmingly voted in favor of term limits? Those questions still going ignored. This despite the mayor's previous support of term limits. He backed a bill in 2018 to put term limits on the books, but also raised fiscal concerns. That bill ultimately failing. If I was the mayor, I'd be asking Ryan Dorsey, look, you're causing me trouble. Political analyst John Deedy quick to point out the mayor is up for re-election in 2024. And if he doesn't respect the will of the voters now, it could end up at the center of his next campaign. I think that that, that could come back to bite not only the mayor, but a lot of other candidates running. Because basically you're looking down at the voters by saying, you passed this legislation on Monday. On Tuesday, let's explain why it was wrong. And while Scott's choosing to stay silent now, eventually he may have to pick a side. You can't you know, sit on the sidelines for a long period of time on this. And if the council passes it, the mayor's got to respond to it one way or the other. Again, that bill was just introduced last week, so it will likely be weeks, if not months, before it potentially ends up on the mayor's desk. Reporting in Baltimore, Rebecca Pryor, Fox 45 News. We sent questions to Councilman Dorsey asking, 72% of voters approved question K. Why aren't you listening to your constituents? Why do you refuse to accept the voice of the people? Are you willing to put your career on the line for this piece of legislation? Fox 45 News reached out to the councilman with those questions three times, and we still have not received a response from him. That brings us to our question of the day. Will you vote to replace your council member if they vote to overturn question K? So far, 97% of voters are saying yes. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in.